Dear friends, welcome to my video. In this video, we will see how to create and install our own custom toolbox in, toolbox in Scilab. So let's begin. We'll be using 6.1.1 version of Scilab, which is I think the latest one. And we'll be creating a toolbox name, programmable toolbox over here. So let's see what are the steps. For the steps, it's very clear. Uh, there is a page on the scilab.org, build a toolbox. So I'll be following the steps over here. It's very simple and straightforward. So I'll just cut to the point. So these are the minimal uh, things which we'll be requiring in this particular um, uh, for building, for creating our own toolbox and then building the toolbox, of, uh, building the installation file of it. So our structure or our content will look something like this over here. So let's begin. So in the folder, uh, quickly I'll create uh, our uh, toolbox folder. I'll create these two particular folder. One is the etc. And the other one will be macros. So, yeah. Perfect. Now, one by one, if you see in etc, we need two files. One is my toolbox, quit and uh, start. And here we need our uh, function and the build macro. So, one by one, we'll build over here. So, let's uh, start. So, the dot quit file is not so important. At first, it defines blah, blah, blah. And it can be left empty. So, we'll create an empty file with the name as my toolbox dot quit. So, in our case, our toolbox name is programmable toolbox. So we'll create a file called programmable.quit. So we'll go to our scilab environment. And over here, inside, I think it should be done inside, uh, if I'm not wrong, etc. So we'll go inside etc. And over here, we'll create a file. And I think I will save it. So control S. I change the folder to toolbox and inside this, I'll go to etc. And I will just uh, put the file name and the type of the file should be dot quit salad quit files quit save yeah so anyway it's an empty file so I'll not do anything I'll just save it and close it the other file I'll go back to my browser and the other file I'll need is uh, dot start so if I go back to my salad what I'll do is I will create another you want to okay no problem so I think oh, it's the last file which it got created I'll just create an new file here and then again go to save and over here uh, instead of dot quit type i'll change it to dot start which is this one and i think i'll modify the name also please note the name of the files and the uh, toolbox should be same so that you should be careful about and the content of this start file will be if i go here so this will be the content so we have to type all these things but i think uh, so I will <coughs> so I will type over here and instead of typing I have already typed it in parallel so I just paste the code here most of the things are anyway same I have tried to keep the I think most of the stuff same and yeah don't forget I mean here we can't see but we don't forget to start this module and yeah clear the module so once you have done this, then we can move it, move further. So macros, this is where you save all your functions, uh, the scilab uh, also called macros. So these are basically the .sci file and where you can add your function. So let's go ahead and do it. So we can again start a new function and then save it probably one level up and inside macros. And this could be any name. Uh, it doesn't need to be the same as the uh, toolbox and uh, it will be of type scilab sci files and probably i'll name this function as add uh, number on add numbers yeah numbers okay so this becomes my file and over here i'll create a function function and the function will be very simple this will be y equals to and then the function name will be probably i'll add uh, numbers i'll keep it same and then i'll give the inputs a comma b that's it and then of course in the function what it will do is it will add y equals to a plus b perfect so i can test this function also in my environment so i'll quickly go to scilab i'll go to this place where this function is there and then probably i'll try try running it i think i can do is i can run it directly from here uh, of course it needs this 
inputs so i can use some inputs here for example 2 6 and i expect answer to be 8 yeah that's the answer so anyway i don't want to spend too much of time on the function and moving further uh, what we can see is okay so we have created the quit and a start file we have created our function uh, no we let's create the other files which is build macros.sce so let's see what is that's content so this is that file build macros.sce so let's go back to our environment here we'll create another new file and i think this should be created again under macro so i go back one level and in the macro this should be sce file if i was not wrong and that's the first one and the file name should be build macros Perfect. Now the content of this file will be will be given over here. So I have of course typed it uh, up front and I'm just pasting the code over here. So I think this file is also done. If I move further, now what we have to do is we have to create the builder.sc file and the content will be this. So again we'll go to our environment and most likely we'll do a save. And this should be created at the root level, so over here, and then the file name will be .sce. No, the file type will be sce, and the file name will be builder .sce. Yeah, perfect. And the content again, I have typed it up front, so I just paste it over here. Perfect. Now, if I go further down, it requires by executing this file, you will build your toolbox. Okay. So I think it will also generate a cleaner file. I don't have to write this explicitly. And that's all is what I guess. So it gives few issues like create your scripts and put it in macros and blah, blah, blah. So I think we have done more or less most of the stuff. So I go back to my environment and uh, builder.sc, I'll run and see what happens. So I've executed. So if you notice, it has created a few files here in this folder. One is .bin file and one is a library files. And even if I go one level up, in which is the root of my toolbox, I can see the other files which are automatically created, like cleaner, loader, unloader, blah, blah. So though all those things are good. Uh, keep them. And I think most of our work of creating a toolbox is done. Now, if I go back to the portal, what it says is we have done this step number three. Now, step number four is to zip the overall folder. So let me do that. So I go to my explorer and I think I'll go one level up. And over here, I'll right click on this folder and compress to zip file. I'll keep the name same, uh, uh, name as the same, whatever the toolbox name is. Okay. Then install your toolbox with this particular command. So atom install and then the toolbox zip file name I have to give. So I'll just copy paste this part and go to my environment over here. Yeah. And then over here, I will probably what I'll do is I'll also go one level up to the root where this file is actually present. And I can just use this and install it. So, but before I press enter, I would like to show where this toolbox will actually get installed. So, if you go to your installation folder of Scilab, inside that there will be a folder called Contrib. Uh, contrib. So, over here, this toolbox should get installed. Is what I feel. Uh, so, let me just press enter and see what it happens. So, I get some error. And if I scroll over here, what it says is at the description read the file blah blah blah. Okay, so description file is missing. So we have to add the description file. No problem. So to add the description file, we'll go to our uh, environment again. And here there is a toolbox skeleton uh, is the like a template which is given. So I'll copy paste this description file from here to particular my folder. So I'll just come here and paste it, I think, at the root level. And then I'll open it. Probably I can use Notepad++. So I'll just uh, double click here and it will open my file in Notepad++. So you can leave it as it is also, but it's a good idea to change at least some of the basic things uh, like toolbox name, title and all. So that you can either copy paste from your file or type it. That doesn't matter. So I'll just type my things toolbox and again I'll just give some space. So yeah, uh, this will come as a description file. This is required. And, uh, what else is required? Summary, a skeleton of, uh, I think, sample programmable toolbox. Or I can copy paste this part. That's better. Control C, Control V. Yeah. 
what is version you can put some number so i will put probably 1.10 oh, and author name probably i'll just put again programmable and what is your name and email address so this is the person who will maintain it so i'll just put same and my email address probably is yeah you can choose how much information you want to put so i just put the bare minimum so my email address is programmer world 1990 at the rate of gmail.com okay and what else so i will leave the rest of the things as it is for the timing for uh, doing it quick i close this and then i'll probably go back to my folder over here and i'll go one level up i think i'll delete this and i'll recreate my zip file so let me see what it happens this time and yeah this zipping is quick i go back to my environment and again i run this okay this time something is happening at least it's atoms updating and database scanning repository blah 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 okay so something got installed this is the version number these are the details which you fill in over there if you recall i can quickly go back to my environment contrib is where i said yeah this is the place where i told like this version will come up this instruction will come up and this is what we can see it over here perfect now what we can do is we can try to load this and see how it happens so i will just go to an api called atom at uh, I think what I can do is add them load and yeah, perfect. If I click here, I think this is already loaded uh, because that's what the answer is showing. And you can also check uh, atoms get installed. Uh, inst uh, yeah, so this is installed for all users by default. This is the version, and yeah. So what we can do is also we can check whether the instruction is really there or not. So we can call the method add numbers. Um, probably I can do something else, it doesn't matter. Perfect. So I will also try to restart and see if it works or not. I'll, I'm closing this. Okay, so I'll show you, of course, close it. So my scilab is closed, now I'm restarting. Yeah, so let me wait for it to come up. Perfect, so it has come up and what I can do is I can now try. Perfect, see, uh, my method is there. It's, uh, of course, I can also check whether my this is loaded or not installed so yeah my uh, particular toolbox is installed over here i can see the details over here and i can also use my method uh, of course i can use it for anything yeah so this is the simplest way how you can create a method quickly and then you can convert it into a toolbox and then install it using the atoms uh, install uh, api so that's all. I hope this video is useful to you. I'll put all these uh, scripts, whatever I have used in this particular uh, video, in my portal of programmable.co. Please visit that. And I hope this video is useful to you. If you have any questions or suggestions, then please put it in the comment section. And if you like this video, then please.